How smart are moderns? It is difficult to gauge how much smarter mankind has become over the eons. A cursory look at the field of economics might help us imagine how wide the gap has grown over the years. In ancient times a physical object would be worked on and modified. This work would add value to the object, and it would then become a marketable product. A product once fashioned could become the basis of a business. If the artisan wished and others liked what he was doing, he could take the item with the added value to a market. A market is where buyer and seller meet. The buyer and seller are two people who create things of value that are indirectly tradable. All progress is created because two people create tradable commodities. Two come to an agreement, the buyer and the seller, to make goods or perform services that the other can use. The value of the product or service traded are what the two participants decide. The labor value of the traded items must be comparable. The obligation incurred by the buyer is transferable and transportable. The obligation incurred by the buyer and given to the seller can be given unto a third party, so this party can make a claim on the buyer or transfer the obligation to another seller. Because the obligation incurred by the buyer was transportable and transferable, various means were used to turn the value into information. Information is more compact and secure than goods and services. The value becomes information that can be communicated to a third party. We call this information about value money. Money is the language of value. Money conveys information about value. A market is composed of the value added to the assets of a political jurisdiction. This value exists as the information embedded in the currency. Money being a means to convey the information about credit outstanding to a third party. Ancients understood value as something added onto an asset to make it useful. The value of the use added determined the price asked. But the determination of value was subjective. The determination of value was not a public concern. Each person decided what they wanted for what they produced and what they would pay for what they purchased. Even though it was not used this accent on individual choice created a kind of labor theory of value. In modern times, the community has become involved in the setting of prices. The value of goods and services are dictated to the individual buyer and seller by public bodies. This is what we know of as communism. This dictation of value is due to the establishment of a social agenda. Politicians tell us what our values ought to be and the things we ought to strive for. Goods and services are then priced according to the social agenda and what is needed to push the agenda forward. If we do not need families or believe the conventional family is a hindrance to the agenda, family structure will be dismantled and put at a disadvantage compared to models of living the government believes are more compatible with the agenda being pushed. Modern people think there is a reason why things are done. Modern man has decided he knows the reason not only why things are done, but why some things ought to be done and why other things ought to remain undone. There is no reason because there is no why, no explanation to events. The reasons man gives are not valid reasons. Man justifies and rationalizes. Mankind cannot explain. Humans cannot develop a true reason for why things are as they are. For mankind there are only preferences. Your reasons are your preferences. To not murder because it is wrong is your preference. Others have a different preference. Has any sane person ever saw a reason for murder? Yet people are constantly being murdered. Which means many people are forming reasons for why another human being ought to be murdered. In human reality one preference cannot be validated more than the other. Mankind has no reason not to kill his kind. 
The reason must come from God. Modern people live like animals. They are convinced their preferences matter. Society is being taken over by the narcissistic ego. Modern people embrace the dual hypothesis that governs the ego. Ego decrees that might makes right and the end justifies the means. Create a mob willing to kill to implement their preference and you have established a custom. A custom regulated is a law. A law is a way of doing things that is backed up by force. Create a goal and you have an established a social agenda. Mob behavior created the modern world. There is no reason for what people are doing, there is only the fact that have the power to do it and the ego that thinks what they do is important. Natural law is logical. Logical activity creates value. Creating value gives the creator value or merit. What we do is not important unless it is validated by the needs of others. This is the market. Modern people do not like markets. Markets do not always reflect the agenda of the mob. This is why socialism is prevalent in modern communities. The ego of modern peoples puts their emotional wants in front of what the market validates. But in a contest of egos there is no arbiter but war or some form of violence. The violence may be channeled into elections, but a vote that does not go your way is often a sign that the election was rigged and an indicator that a more direct method must be used to get what one wants. Value is created by work and validated by the market. To compare the wisdom of the ancients with the intelligence of moderns, we must look at the rate of civilization. Civilization being the accumulated wealth available to a community. There are two types of wealth, assets, and equity. Assets can be divided into four categories, natural, human, technical, and mechanical. These resources are worked with and on to produce equity. Equity can be considered to be the value of the labor added to the resources of nature. We use knowledge and equipment and people to produce things composed of a modified physical commodity. Very little of nature is useful to man without some degree of processing. Modern peoples think we need a reason to produce what we create. It needs to reflect a social agenda. We do know just build homes, we build certain kinds of homes in certain places for certain categories of peoples. We create services to fulfill an agenda. There is a reason for them. But these reasons are completely artificial and subjective. They have no inherent moral worth. God wants us to work, we have to create value. We cannot decide what has value except in our own case. Social agendas are false and ego-driven narcissism. However, this makes no sense to moderns because moderns reject the existence of God or at least his relevance. What God can do, say modern peoples, man can do better. In God's world man must work in faith, not to save oneself, but to save others. Our work is directed outwards, not inwards. This creates a far greater problem than human understand. If we are to help others, it is they who define the help and its degree or value. This requires a market. Also if we are really to be useful we have to add value to what exists, but this also means we have to know the value of what we do. All man can do is to add value, through work, to what exists. What exists was not created by anyone and so no one can own this. Nature belongs to God. Modern man in his wisdom lays claim to nature. We buy and sell nature as if it was ours. The ancients knew nature belonged to the Creator. We have permission to use what we need for our own use, but we have no right to claim the natural world as a commodity and turn nature into commercial property. To compare the level of intelligence of moderns to ancient peoples we need to look at the rate of wealth creation, 
per person over time. Obviously ancient man had far less to work with and so the accumulation of wealth and the formation of civilization was slow. However, history ought to show exponential growth. In comparing rates of growth over time and between systems, we ought to be able to compute which way of life provides the best results. A model that permits all persons to work freed of the preferences of others is predicted to produce the best results. The objective is to create the most value for the least cost. Centralization of power means the concentration of wealth, but wealth is produced solely by specialization. This is something each individual is solely responsible for. When production is manipulated to fit a public or private agenda specialization will be reduced. We do not even need to acquire the actual data. We can theoretically project the results by making some logical assumptions. A highly stratified society will not progress as fast as a society that is decentralized. A society that is agenda-driven will not progress as fast as one that permits the mechanisms of the market to operate freely. A society with a monetary system that uses assets as the basis of the currency, that is something with value, will not measure value any better than a rubber ruler can measure length accurately. Societies that are liberal and therefore use the systems of liberalism will not progress as fast, comparatively speaking, as those societies and economies that are more conservative. Ancient society being more conservative had smarter populations than modern societies that are embracing the liberal agenda. Liberalism is not just the opposite political views of conservatism. Liberalism is a culture of failure. By being focused on social agendas and concentrating wealth and power in fewer and fewer hands to push through the cultural mission, liberals do embrace a monetary system they are able to control and systems of ownership that allow wealth and power to be concentrated. Ultimately this makes liberal systems less effective, comparatively speaking, and those who live within them, systemically less intelligent. The conclusion being, one cannot live in an irrational system and embrace irrational thought patterns without it negatively impacting one's level of intelligence.